Hello viewers, this is Dr. Fatima presenting you the video on data structure. In my previous video, we have seen the logical aspect of uh, uh, how insertion, deletion, search operation is performed in the list. In this video, we will see the implementation of creation of linked list, insertion, display, deletion and search operation of the linked list. The very first step in the implementation of the linked list is declaration of the structure of node. This slide shows how a node is declared using the keyword struct. The struct node consists of two elements, the data element which is of data type name, the pointer element star next which is of data type struct node. This diagram shows you the structure of the node. Let us see the code for creating the list. The pointer n, head, tail and p are of type struct node is declared. In order to create the list, the first step is get the number of elements in the list. Initially, set head is equal to null. Use the for loop to perform the creation of a node and to list, link it to the list in each iteration by varying the variable i from 0 to 2. The malloc function will allocate memory for the new node n. Get the data from the user and set as n.data. Then set n.next is equal to null. When the list is empty, for that is for the very first iteration, that is the head is equal to null condition is true. So, set the head pointer and tail pointer to point to n. When the list is not empty, that is for subsequent iteration, set tail.next is equal to n to link the new node to the last node, which is the tail node. Then, set new tail to be n. This iteration continues for the number of element times given. Let us see what happens during the creation of the node in detail. Let us assume the number of elements in the list given to be 3. As the i value varies from 0 to 2, the loop executes 3 times. During the first iteration, the new node is created. Let us assume the new node is created in the memory location 1001. The data value is set to 30 and the next pointer is set to null. Proceeding further, head is equal to null condition is true during the first iteration as the list is empty initially. Hence set the head pointer to and the tail pointer to point to n. At the end of first iteration, the list looks like this. During the second iteration, when a new node is created, assume it is allocated the memory location of 1015. The data value is set to 60. The next field is set to null. Now, as the condition head is equal to null is false, the else part executes. The next pointer of tail is made to point to n by setting tail.next is equal to n. By this, the node with 30 has the address field set to 1015. Now, the new tail is n. This is how the list looks at the end of the second iteration. Now, proceeding further towards the third iteration, a new node is created with the data value set to 90. The next field is set to null. Now, as the condition head is equal to null is false, the else part executes. Therefore, the next pointer of tail is made to point to n by setting tail.next is equal to n. By this, the node with 60 has the address field set to 1023 and the new tail is equal to n. This is how the list looks at the end of the third iteration, thus the list is created. This 
Now let us see the code to display the elements of the list. Consider the example list shown in the field in the slide. This slide gives the code to display the elements through the function display. The head pointer is passed as an argument to the display function. A temporary pointer P is declared to be of data type struct node, which is used to traverse through the list. Initially, the pointer P is set to head. First, check the list is empty. If so, the print the list is empty. If the list is not empty, print the data element of the node P and traverse to the next node by making the pointer P to point to the next node of P. This is set by setting P is equal to P dot next. This process of printing and traversing to the next node is repeated until the null node is read. Thus, the element in the list are displayed. Now let us see the code for inserting element at the beginning of the list through the function insert begin. The head pointer is passed as an argument to this function. Create a node by allocating memory to the mlog function. Get the element to be inserted. Set the data element of n as n.data and set the n.next is equal to null. To insert this new node in the beginning of the list, make the next pointer of n point to head. Now the new node head is set as n. Let us observe how the process of insertion in the beginning of the list is carried out. Next let us see the code for inserting the element at the, at the end of the list through the function insert n with the tail pointer passed as an argument. Create a new node n by allocating memory through malloc function. Then get the data to be inserted from the user and set as n.data. Then set n.next is equal to null. To insert this new node in the end of the list, set tail.next to new node. Then set new tail as n. By this, the new node is linked to the end of the list. Let us observe how the insertion at the end of the list is carried out. Next, let us see the code for the insertion of element in the middle of the list to the function insert middle. The head pointer is, point, is passed as an argument to this function. First, get the element after which the insertion to be done. Create a new node by allocating memory through malloc function. Then, Get the data to be inserted from the user. Set this data as n.data and set n.next as null. To insert an element in the middle of the list, a temporary pointer P is used and it is made to point to head. This pointer is made to traverse through the list till the node after which insertion to be done is reached. Each time as P travels through the list, the data of pointer P is compared with the element given after which insertion to be done. Once the specified node is reached, 
make the next pointer n point to next pointer of p by setting n dot next is equal to p dot next. A next pointer of p is made to point to n by setting as p dot next is equal to n. By this, the new node is inserted after p. Let us observe how the insertion in the middle of the list is carried out. Next, let us see the code how to perform the deletion in the list. Earlier, for insertion, I have written the code through diff three different functions to do the insertion at the beginning, at the end, and in the middle of the list. Now, we will see the code how the deletion at the beginning, at the end, and the middle of the list is done through a single function. This delete node will take care of all the three cases. In this, first the list is checked for empty. If so, then print the list is empty. Else, get the element to be deleted from the user. Make use of the temporary pointer P to point to the head initially. If the deletion to be done in the beginning of the list, make the head pointer point to the next node of head by setting head is equal to head dot next. If deletion to be done in the end, make use of the other pointer Q to point to the node succeeding the node P. Check if Q is the train node by checking q.next is equal to null. If, the, if so, then check for the data to be deleted is present. If true, then set new tail as p, by which the node preceding the tail is made as a new tail and the tail node is disconnected, therefore deleted. If the node to be deleted is neither head nor tail, then reach the node to be deleted by traversing the pointer P and Q through the list until the node to be deleted is reached. This is done by setting P is equal to P.next and Q is equal to Q.next. Once the specified node is reached, make the next pointer of P to point to next pointer of Q. This is done by setting p.next is equal to q.next. Thus, the middle node gets deleted. Now, let us see the code to perform the search operation in the linked list through the function search. The head pointer is passed as an argument. Initially, make the temporary pointer p to point to the head. First check if the list is empty, if so, print the list is empty. Else, set the variable found as false. Get the element to be searched from the user. Compare the data element of each node with the element to be searched. If matching not done, then move to the next node by setting the pointer p to point to the p.next. This is continued until the element found or the end of the list is reached. When compared, if the data element is matching with the element to be searched, then set found variable to true and print the element found as Else, print the element not found in the list. Thus, the given element is searched in the list. With this understanding, you can try to solve the problem with the list as count the number of elements in the list, find the sum of all the elements in the list, return the position of the given element in this list. Hope this video was informative. Have a happy learning. See you in the next video.